born on December 29, 1991, to parents Christine and Roger Bowling. Russell Bowling had, by all accounts, a pretty idyllic childhood, growing up with two older brothers, Andrew and Nigel, in East Riding, Yorkshire, England. The Bowlings were your average, tight-knit, upper-middle-class family. After finishing school, Russell enrolled on a bricklaying course at the local Bishop Burton College. Roger Bowling had promised his three sons an early inheritance of a home each and the sum of £300,000. Roger had told the boys that once Russell was 18, they would all receive their inheritance and could do with the money and the homes what they liked. Russell had plans to use this to start his own business, but was sworn to secrecy by his parents from telling any of his friends about his upcoming windfall. However, everything changed on the 2nd of March, 2010, when 18-year-old Russell, who left his family home, would never return. By all accounts, the day started as normal. Russell left his house at 8 a.m. to go to college as he normally would, albeit his parents noticed that he was dressed smarter than usual, wearing a black Ben Sherman jacket, blue jeans, and black training shoes. When Russell failed to come home later that evening, his parents contacted the police. Their son was missing. On the day that Russell disappeared, an employee at the Bempton Cliffs Nature Reserve noticed that his car was parked there when they were leaving for the day at 5 p.m. Upon further inspection of the car, the worker saw that Russell had paid for a full-day ticket at 11.30 a.m., and thinking he was just taking his time exploring the reserve, thought nothing of it and went home. It was only the next day when the worker began his shift and saw that Russell's Renault Clio was still in the parking lot that suspicions were raised. Bimpton Cliffs are about a 45-minute drive from Russell's home in East Riding, and his parents told police that he did not have the fuel in his car to get to the cliff. With just under four liters of petrol and less than 10 pounds in his bank account, he would have needed to stop and fill up on the way there. When police looked into this, they found that no money had been withdrawn or spent on Russell's account, but his car had made it to Brampton Cliffs, so he must have filled up somewhere. His parents started to speculate that he had not gone to the nature reserve alone. When Christine and Roger looked at his sat nav, they found that he had been taking quite a few unusual trips in the days leading up to his disappearance. He had done over 250 miles going to Bradford, Bridlington, and York, with his family believing that he had been in college at this time, knew nothing about why he went to these places, or maybe more importantly, who he was meeting up with, and why go all the way to Bimpton Cliffs without telling anyone. Bimpton Cliffs are not just a picturesque nature reserve. It also houses one of the many disused RAF bases across the UK. The former radar station was opened during the Second World War and was used up until it was formally closed in April 1972. After its closure, plans were put forward to ensure the public could not access the station or its underground bunkers and tunnels, but beneath this creepy exterior, presenting as an abandoned bungalow with a huge chimney stack and bricked-up barricades. It is still a place with an aura of haunting and mysterious memories. In recent years, those exploring the tunnels have unearthed erotic drawings on the walls of the labyrinth of walls and submarine-style hatches. The paintings and artwork that litter the walls of the disused bunker consist of paintings of naked bodies having orgies. It also depicts people with devil horns. The devil's 666 branded throughout, as well as other eerie messages such as this way to hell. Whilst the identity of the artist behind the imagery remains a secret, it has been widely alleged to be part of a collection from a cult where satanic ritual and devil worship took place throughout the late 70s and early 80s, until the police allegedly raided the bunker and arrested those responsible. Although the satanic cult in the bunker at Bimpton Hills is something that is regularly spoken about online, there is no physical evidence of this. No news reports, arrest reports, anything that would suggest that a cult had been practicing in the tunnels below. Russell's family told the investigators that he had been fascinated with the bunker, regularly researching the history of the bunker and alleged cult. Russell had a memory stick full of images of the artwork that never left his side, and whilst as far as his family were aware, he had never visited the bunker before. They knew he had a large interest in it. Could it be that he was finally going to see the bunker that had captured his attention for so long? Could he have gone inside and met his fate in there? Russell's parents would describe how Russell suffered from a speech disorder and if he had met someone with more sinister motives, he would have had trouble voicing his discomfort. The USB filled with images of the artwork that Russell owned was never found, and it is suspected that it was taken with him, wherever he was going that day. Russell's father would also suggest that a lot of the images had not been available online, 
and that Russell had been trading them with an unknown source. Was he meeting that source? Of course, people online will suggest that Russell was sacrificed as part of a satanic ritual, but this is all speculation. As I said, there is no evidence of the existence of this cult, and if it did exist in the 70s, well, they're long gone now. During the initial search, the Humberside Fire and Rescue Service used heat-sensitive cameras to search the RAF bunker beside Bempton Cliffs, which would only show Russell if he was alive. The search moved on, and the Bowlings became increasingly distrusting of the police and their efforts to find their son. Eventually, the Bowlings became desperate and paid out of their own pocket to have the bunker fully searched almost two years after Russell first disappeared. The bunker had now been sealed due to an increase in activity from people breaking in to explore the bunker and tunnels. The family paid 1,200 pounds to reopen the bunker and remained present whilst firefighters conducted a training exercise with the goal to find Russell. After three hours of searching, it became evident that Russell was not in the bunker and no evidence was found to suggest he had ever been, and it was resealed once more. That hasn't stopped people finding more imaginative ways over the last decade to break in and look around. More and more images of the erotic artwork have been posted online in the years since Russell's disappearance. And it's evident now, more than ever, that if a body was present in the bunker, it would have been recovered. As well as looking up the bunker, shortly before he left home on the day he disappeared, Russell would search for Ravenscar and browse some web pages relating to the village. His parents didn't think this was out of the norm, as they had a holiday home there they would visit regularly. Was Russell planning to go there after his day out? The holiday home was just under 30 miles away from Bempton Cliffs and could have been plausible. In August 2010, a pair of human feet were found a distance away from Bempton Cliffs on Humber Estuary. This ignited the family's hopes that at long last they would get some form of closure into what happened to their son. On one of the feet was a brown steel toe-capped boot, similar to the pair of boots missing from Russell's possessions, which his family believed he was wearing when he disappeared. Forensic testing, however, would later reveal no link between the feet and Russell. The mystery would continue. The Raven's Car Holiday Home would be of interest to police and the family again shortly after the feet were found when his parents found a pair of Russell's training shoes at the property. The exact shoes were what his parents had originally believed Russell was wearing when he went missing, with no other footwear having appeared to be missing. Had Russell been alive all this time? Hidden? Or had this key piece of evidence simply been missed during the original search? The police, of course, had a different theory on what happened to Russell that day. During the initial investigation, they uncovered a recording that posed as some kind of suicide note. On the recording, Russell describes his wishes of wanting to be buried in the countryside. He spoke about how he believed he wasn't intelligent enough and compared himself to his older brother's and father's success. When the recording was unveiled to his parents, they claimed they were aware of it when it was originally made, three years before. Christine told investigators that he had made it during exam season whilst awaiting his GCSE results and had not had any thoughts like this since. Bimpton Cliffs have been the place of choice for a worrying amount of people wanting to end their lives, with a handful of people meeting their maker at the nature reserve every year. Whilst Russell's body has never been found, police are adamant that sadly, the teenager had chosen the spot to end his life and after jumping from the cliffs, was swept out to sea and never found. But with his parents reporting that since starting college, his mood and outlook on life had significantly improved, what if anything had happened to cause Russell to take his own life? Well, as I said earlier, Russell was awaiting a significant early inheritance alongside his brothers in the form of a semi-detached home and 300,000 pounds, which he had planned to start a business with. This early inheritance was disclosed to Russell shortly after his father had been diagnosed with a degenerative brain disease. He had told his son shortly before Russell disappeared that if the disease progressed to a point where he was unable to care for himself, he would to bring his life to a dignified end. Although Rogers said that his children were supportive of his decision, could the possible loss of his father had sent Russell into a spiral of depression? Could he have chosen to take his own life before having to live with his father? The family refute this claim, but they do believe his upcoming windfall could have had something to do with his mysterious disappearance. 300,000 pounds is not an insignificant sum, and whilst Roger had advised his son not to disclose his upcoming windfall to anyone, even close friends, there is a possibility that the temptation was too much. Remember, Russell Bowling was a 19-year-old boy when he went missing. Finally enjoying life and excelling on his college course, 
could he have bragged about the inheritance to those around him? His parents refused to believe that Russell killed himself and refute even more the idea that Russell disappeared to start a new life before receiving the money. But could someone had heard about his wealth? Did someone get jealous and plot to take the money for themselves? Roger, whilst not unconvinced of this theory, would say we have never received a ransom note and I admit it's pure speculation. But Russell had had asthma and if there was an attempt to restrain him, it could have brought on an attack and it may have gone horribly wrong. Ever since Russell failed to return home, his family had always believed that Russell did not travel to Bempton Cliffs alone that day. Remember how Russell had little fuel and little money in his bank account. Roger and Christine recreated Russell's journey to prove to the police that he must have been with someone else that day. Otherwise, it would have been impossible for his car to even get to the reserve. When redoing the journey with the same amount of fuel in their car as Russell had and without refueling, they ran out of fuel 20 miles away from Bempton Cliffs in a village called Brandisburton. The family believed that someone else was traveling with Russell, whether in his car or following him there. And it is this unknown person who paid to add fuel to Russell's car so he could complete the journey. The Bowlings also criticized the investigators for limiting their search to the area where his car was left. There is no evidence to say that Bimpton Cliffs was Russell's final destination that day and he could have left his car there before continuing with their journey to their final unknown destination. Russell's brother Andrew told the press that he believes his brother went to visit the bunker, citing his fascination with the underground mystery for months before his disappearance. He said, I personally think Russell had no interest in the cliffs. He wanted to look at the bunker, and I think that's where the tragedy happened. The fact he looked it up online that morning and then ended up there a few hours later suggests that's what happened. I think he went there with someone. He may have suffered an asthma attack as there is supposed to be asbestos in there, but we don't know and no one has come forward. The most disturbing part of this case was revealed in late 2010. Desperate for answers and trying to aid in the investigation, Roger Bowling gave his personal computer to the Humberside police in the hopes that they could glean any evidence from it of Russell's fate or whereabouts. Nevertheless, what the police found revealed more about the family than they ever could have imagined. Instead of finding clues on Russell's disappearance, the police found hundreds and hundreds of images of child sexual exploitation. The police would describe they counted over 400 images of children posed erotically, as well as images of people having sexual relations with a range of different animals. Roger Bowling alleged that he had not downloaded the pornographic images, but had been gifted them on a memory stick by another relative, to which he burnt the images onto a CD and stored them on his computer. The images were found on an array of devices at the family home and their home in Ravenscar. The images of children were classed as level one, the least serious in the eyes of the law, but not in the eyes of the public. Roger Bowling was charged with 11 offenses relating to the offenses with five counts of making indecent images of children, three counts of possessing indecent images of children, and three counts of possessing extreme pornographic images, including bestiality. In court, Roger claimed that his behavior had been a result of the large number of drugs he had been taking to help with his brain disease. He told the court that he had since stopped taking them. He pled guilty to the charges against him, and he was placed on the sex offenders register for five years, was also made subject to a sexual offenders prevention order for five years, and was ordered to pay over 400 pounds toward the cost of the hearing. Whilst going through court, his lawyer said, the family and reality are having to experience a living hell. Every time remains are found, the family are told and are having to endure further hell. The defendant has been frank enough to say that that is at the forefront of his mind at this present time, and not the punishment he is going to get from his court. Suffice to say that Roger used his son's disappearance to his full advantage in order to avoid a prison sentence. At the sentencing at Whole Crown Court, Judge Alistair MacDonald said to Roger, It's very sad to see somebody who from what I've read about you has performed significant public services in the past appear in court for offenses of this sort. You have clearly made a substantial contribution to society in the past. Unfortunately, you will lose your good character by acceptance of your guilt, and that will live with you, I'm afraid, for the rest of your life. After Roger's conviction, public sympathy towards the family fell to an all-time low. People began speculating that Roger had something to do with the son's disappearance. Could Russell have discovered the images in the days leading up to his disappearance and been unable to live with the shame had run away or taken his own life? Or worse, had Roger been exploiting Russell during his childhood and had an argument broken out where Russell threatened to tell the authorities and a desperate Roger sought to hide his crimes? 
An inquest into the disappearance of Russell Bowling was held in December 2019. Assistant Coroner David Rosenberg gave a narrative verdict and stated that he believed that Russell had died on the day he disappeared, all those years ago. Rosenberg said, Based on the submissions of the police that no body has been found, I believe somehow he died in the sea at Bempton Cliffs. We do not know how Russell came to die. Mr. Bowling had communication issues, but was doing well as a student at Bishop Burton College on a bricklaying course. Russell was enjoying life, enjoying independence. It is known Mr. Bowling had looked for information about the bunker at Bimpton. There was not enough evidence to show whether he might have tripped and fallen or suffered an asthma attack after going into the RAF bunker. Speaking directly to the Bowlings, Rosenberg said, The thought of what happened to Russell will haunt you for the rest of your lives. The verdict of the inquest was that Russell Bowling, on the balance of probabilities, died at sea. In a shock twist, it was revealed that the coroner did not believe Russell had died by suicide, saying, In terms of unlawful killing, there is no evidence to say Russell had been killed, so I cannot make that finding. Did he die accidentally? Did he die in the RAF bunker after suffering an asthma attack due to asbestos, or did he fall off the cliffs? Again, there is insufficient evidence to make this finding. The conclusion as to how Russell met his fate at sea was left open, with his family hoping one day they will have answers. After the inquest, Roger Bowling said, We think he is dead, but we strongly believe that there is a third party involved, and we don't know whether a crime was committed or not, but for some reason that person for nine years has not come forward to put us out of our misery. The fact that they have not come forward leads us to believe they are either concerned about losing their employment or freedom. As of today, no new information or leads have come to light as to what happened to Russell on that fateful day on the 2nd of March 2010. What do you think? A tragic accident or something more sinister? Leave your thoughts below.